In mid-1942, shipbuilding industrialist Henry J. Kaiser approached the Navy with an ambitious plan. Kaiser proposed that his shipbuilding company, on top of building merchant ships, would build 100 escort carriers based on the S-4 merchant hall under the auspices of MARCOM, the Maritime Commission. All would be built within two years from the start of the first to the completion of the last, using the prefabricated sections method employed for cargo ships. Since there was a war on, the Navy eventually gave him the go-ahead for 50. These were the 7,800-ton Casablanca class, sometimes called the Kaisers since they were all built by Kaiser. Incredibly, all 50 were delivered on time, a testament not only to Kaiser's can-do attitude, but to the U.S.'s industrial capacity. All were originally to be named after bays, but some were renamed after battles. Some were originally slated for transfer to the Royal Navy under Lend-Lease, but in the event, all were kept and most of the second group of bogues were sent instead. These were the first escort carriers designed and built as such from the start, though still based on merchant ship designs and standards, to speed production. As such, they were more capable in their role than most of the previous escort carriers that were conversions, the only exception being the four Sangamons. Again, originally intended mostly for transporting aircraft and being the centerpiece of anti-submarine hunter-killer groups, many that served in the Pacific found themselves taking on the role of assault carrier. Time and again, they provided close air support for amphibious landings as the U.S. liberated or invaded island after island on its march toward Japan. Their high point, undoubtedly, would be the Battle of Samar, where several, along with their destroyer and destroyer escort screens, faced down the bulk of the Japanese Navy, then, only hours later, endured the dreaded kamikaze. With the priority for turbines going to frontline ships, like the early escort destroyers they would often work with, they had to make do with whatever means of propulsion was available. In this case, vertical triple expansion machinery. It wasn't the preferred choice, but it got the do job done, so no complaints here. Main armament was one 5-inch 38 caliber dual-purpose gun in a single open mount located at the stern. Propulsion was four boilers venting to four tiny funnels, two on each side midship, that provided steam to a pair of five-cylinder vertical triple expansion engines arranged on the unit principal. These produced 9,000 horsepower and each directly drove one of the ship's two propellers for a top speed of about 19 knots. Churning was still by one rudder. The flight deck was 474 feet by 80 feet and had one catapult. There were two elevators. The forward one was 41 and 3 quarter feet by 33 and 3 quarter feet. The rear one was 41 and 3 quarter feet by 38 feet. The hangar was 256 feet by 56 feet by 17 and 2 third feet. Aircraft complement was generally about 15 Wildcats and 11 Avenger torpedo planes. Modifications were limited, mostly owing to their limited size and their pressing need in service. Modifications were mostly limited to more medium and light anti-aircraft guns and better radar. These ships saw extensive service in World War II, partly due to their capabilities in their role, but mostly due to their sheer number. Obviously, it's not practical to cover the history of all of them, so I'm just going to hit some highlights. Five Casablanca escort carriers were sunk during the war, all in the Pacific. Liscombe Bay's first major action was her only one. While supporting the invasion of the Gilberts at 5.10 a.m. on November 24, 1943, she was hit by a submarine torpedo that detonated her magazines. Half an hour later, she sunk, taking with her the task group commander, her captain, and Pearl Harbor hero Doris Miller, among others. Coral Sea, originally to have been named Alakula Bay, took part in the invasion of the Gilberts and the Marshalls. She then covered the completion of the New Guinea campaign and the liberation of the Marianas. While undergoing refit at the West Coast on September 15, 1944, she was again renamed, this time Anzio, to free up the name Coral Sea for the large carrier under construction. 
Returning to the fleet in February 1945, she covered the invasion of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Corregidor, originally Anguilla Bay, covered the invasion of the Gilberts and Marshalls. She then covered the completion of the New Guinea Campaign and the liberation of the Marianas. Guadalcanal, originally Astralaba Bay, having already sunk three U-boats, was the center of the hunter-killer group that boarded and captured this U sinking U-505 on June 4, 1944, only two days before D-Day. Let me say that again. They boarded a sinking U-boat. Manila Bay, formerly Bucarelli Bay, took part in the invasion of the Marshalls, the completion of the New Guinea campaign, and the liberation of the Marianas before taking part in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. As part of Taffy 2, she launched strikes to help Taffy 3 during the Battle of Samar. She then covered the liberation of the northern Philippines. While doing so, on January 5, 1945, a kamikaze hit the flight deck starting fires there, in the hangar, and knocking out the radio and radar centers. Returning from repairs, she covered the invasion of Okinawa. Midway, originally named Chapin Bay, provided close air support for the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944, followed by Moratai in the third quarter of 1944. On October 10, 1944, she was renamed St. Lowe to free up the name Midway for the large carrier under construction. On October 25, 1944, at 10.51 a.m. as part of Taffy 3, shortly after the Battle of Samar and the loss of Gambier Bay, St. Lo was hit by a kamikaze. Its bomb exploded in her hangar and started a massive fire that was fed by fueled and armed aircraft there. Explosion after explosion racked the vessel. The abandoned ship was finally given shortly before her magazines exploded, sending her to the bottom. Wake Island, ex Dolomy Bay, covered the liberation of the northern Philippines at the start of 1945. Next, she covered the invasion of Iwo Jima. On April 3, 1945, while covering the invasion of Okinawa, she was so near missed by a kamikaze that it blew a gash 25 feet long and 18 feet high below her waterline. Repairs took until late May when she returned to Okinawa to resume her role until mid-June. White Plains, originally Elber Bay, supported the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944 and the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter. On October 25th, she was part of Taffy 3 as it covered the landings at Leyte Gulf when the Battle of Samar started. Fortunately, unlike Gambier Bay, her position in the group protected her from being shelled and unlike St. Lo, she was able to repel the following kamikaze attack. Kalinin Bay supported the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944 and the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter. Like White Plains, on October 25th, she was part of Taffy 3 when the Battle of Samar erupted. Unlike White Plains, as the trailing ship, she wasn't as lucky. Fifteen major caliber shells hit her, destroying her radar and radio rooms. After the battle, things got worse as Taffy 3 came under kamikaze attack. Two kamikazes hit her. One hit the flight deck, badly damaging it. The second hit one of her funnels. Fortunately, damage was manageable and repairs were completed by mid-January of 1945. Quezon Bay supported the liberation of southern France in the third quarter of 1944. Fanshawe Bay covered the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944. While doing so, on June 15th, she was hit by a bomb that penetrated her rear elevator and exploded in the hangar. A fire was started and the water main was wrecked. Prompt damage control, however, saved the ship and with repairs completed in the third quarter of 1944, she covered the invasion of Moratai. As part of Taffy 3 on October 25th, she came under attack during the Battle of Samar. Despite being hit three times by Japanese gunfire, she was able to avoid the following kamikaze attack and headed to the west coast. Following repairs, in mid-March 1945, she returned to the front and covered the invasion of Okinawa. Kit Kun Bay covered the liberation of the Marianas and the invasion of the Palau's. She also was part of Taffy 3 at the Battle of Samar. While not hit by gunfire, she was hit by a kamikaze shortly afterward. Following repairs on January 1st, 1945, 
she was hit by another kamikaze that struck portside at the waterline midship. Despite fires and flooding, she eventually returned to the west coast where she was repaired. Tulagi, originally Fortezella Bay, covered the liberation of southern France in the third quarter of 1944. After transferring to the Pacific, she covered the liberation of the northern Philippines at the start of 1945. Next, she covered the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Gambier Bay covered the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944, followed by the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter of that year. As part of Taffy 3, on October 25, 1944, she was part of the Wild Battle of Samar. Hit time after time, the armless escort carrier rolled over and sunk, burning end to end. Nihenta Bay covered the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944 and the evasion of Okinawa in 1945. Lunga Point, originally Alazan Bay, joined the fighting around the Philippines in mid-November 1944. Next, she supported the liberation of the northern Philippines. After resupply, she provided close air support for the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She finished the war launching raids against the Chinese coast. Bismarck Sea, originally Alakula Bay, was sunk February 21, 1945, after being hit by two kamikazes while supporting the invasion of Iwo Jima. Salameu, originally Anguilla Bay, was hit by a kamikaze January 13, 1945, while covering the liberation of the northern Philippines. The resulting fire and damage was extensive, and it wasn't until May that she returned to the front to cover the fighting on Okinawa. Hogit Bay also covered the liberation of the Marianas in mid-1944 and the invasion of Okinawa. Katashan Bay supported the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter of 1944. As part of Taffy 2, her aircraft came to the aid of Taffy 3 during the Battle of Samar. At the start of 1945, she covered the liberation of the northern Philippines. While doing so, on January 8th, a kamikaze hit her below the bridge. After only two hours, the fire and flooding were brought under control, and she eventually headed to the west coast for repairs. Marcus Island, originally Canaluca Bay, covered the invasion of the Palau's, then took part in the liberation of Leyte. As part of Taffy II, she wasn't directly part of the Battle of Samar, but her aircraft did come to the aid of Taffy III. At the start of 1945, she covered the liberation of the northern Philippines. Next, she covered the invasion of Okinawa. Savo Island, originally Kaita Bay, covered the invasion of the Palau's, then took part in the liberation of Leyte. As part of Taffy II, she wasn't directly part of the Battle of Samar, but her aircraft did come to the aid of Taffy III. At the start of 1945, she covered the liberation of the northern Philippines. Next, she covered the invasion of Okinawa. Omni Bay, covered the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter of 1944. As part of Taffy II, during the Battle of Samar, her aircraft did their best to come to the aid of Taffy III. After resupply, she covered the drive up the northern Philippines. While passing through the Sulu Sea on January 4, 1945, she was hit by a kamikaze. In addition to hitting the carrier, the plane released its two bombs. One crashed through the flight and hangar decks, exploding in the ship's main hull, where it destroyed the fire mains. The second exploded in the hangar, where it started a massive fire that was fed by armed and fueled aircraft, and eventually reached the magazines. With the magazines baking off and no water to f for firefighting, the crew abandoned ship and her hulk was scuttled. Petrov Bay covered the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter of 1944. During the Battle of Samar, she was part of Taffy 1, so didn't have to face the Japanese surface fleet. Her aircraft did, however, join the attack on the Japanese fleet. That's not to say Taffy 1 got off scot-free. At 7.30 a.m., Taffy 1 was attacked by the first kamikaze strike of the war. Fortunately, despite some near misses, none hit her. At the start of 1945, she supported the liberation of the northern Philippines. Her last major operations were covering the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Rudyard Bay covered the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Saginaw Bay covered the invasion of the Palau's in the third quarter of 1944. During the Battle of Samar, she was ferrying aircraft with Shenango, so missed the battle. 
At the start of 1945, she por supported the liberation of the northern Philippines and then went on to cover the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Sergeant Bay covered the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Shamrock Bay covered the liberation of the northern Philippines, followed by the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Shipley Bay covered the invasion of Okinawa. Steamer Bay covered the liberation of the northern Philippines at the start of 1945, followed by the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Makassar Strait, originally Ulitaka Bay, covered the initial invasion of Okinawa during the month of April 1945. Macon Island, originally Woodcliffe Bay, joined the fighting around the Philippines in mid-November 1944. Next, she supported the liberation of the northern Philippines. After resupply, she provided close air support for the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She finished the war launching raids against the Chinese coast. Lunga Point, originally Alazan Bay, joined the fighting around the Philippines in mid-November 1944. Next, she supported the liberation of the northern Philippines. After resupply, she provided close air support for the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She finished the war launching raids against the Chinese coast. Bismarck Sea, originally Alakula Bay, was sunk February 21, 1945, after being hit by two kamikazes while supporting the invasion of Iwo Jima. Salameu, originally Anguilla Bay, was hit by a kamikaze January 13, 1945, while covering the liberation of the northern Philippines. The resulting fire and damage was extensive, and it wasn't until May that she returned to the front to cover the fighting on Okinawa.